Hello everybody. Firstly, I acknowledge the traditional custodians of this land on which we meet and pay my respects to Elders past, present and future. I acknowledge the support of UTS for my contribution to this conference. I'm a visual artist and interactive author. I interact with scientists, artists and other scholars to co-author stories that come from scientific data and Indigenous cultural knowledge. Like many Australians with European and Aboriginal Australian ancestry, I am dispossessed of knowledge of my traditional lands and languages and strive to reconnect the different ways of knowing that together sustained Aboriginal Australia for tens of thousands of years. Since working as an artist in Antarctica, I recognise Antarctic krill, Euphosia superba, as my totem. And as I strive to understand this keystone creature, I learn about the Southern Ocean as the ecosystem that drives natural cycles of climate change worldwide. So, my perspectives are Antarctic, Australian, Indigenous and global. Today I present with UTS scientist Ellery Johnson. Together we will show how we work with people around the world to combine our perspectives to build an animated interactive map, to reconnect science and art with Indigenous cultural knowledge that has for too long been missing from reports to the International Panel for Climate Change, the IPCC. The premise of our work is that just as people process information in different ways, so the different languages of art can convey scientific data in ways best remembered when people can relate the data to personal experience and then pass on their understanding as art in all its forms. This is an Indigenous approach to education that is available to everyone. I begin by explaining the background, methods and results of our work to map and identify stories in ways of knowing described by Indigenous scholar Tyson Young Kapota as minds that work together to create a holistic view. We show ways of telling stories that expand understanding of scientific data, thereby expanding the sources of knowledge as fundamental to accurate, long-lived communications and robust decisions. Background. Scientific data and Indigenous cultural knowledges indicate that all lands and waterways are connected. In line with the strong movement towards recognising place-based knowledge and connection to country, and the central role of the Southern Ocean in regulating global ecosystems, we are collecting stories along the path of the ocean currents from Antarctica to all other areas to express the significance of the linkages around the world of the effect of climate change. Ancient and new technologies are explored to understand connectivity in natural systems with stories informed by Indigenous knowledge and the scientific method. Our methods build on the success of the 2018 Lens on Health Round Table event for National Science Week at UTS. Guided by Wiradjuri scholar Megan Williams, everyone was welcomed, introduced and engaged as we told our stories of relationship to Aboriginal Australia. We then engaged through the arts with the science of connectivity in nature. Everyone had something to teach and something to learn. In 2020, co-authors of this paper met for roundtable discussions via Zoom. Facilitated by Antarctic scientist Andrew Constable, we came from different countries and disciplines to co-author a paper that would engage policymakers in the scientific data of Southern Ocean health through a range of perspectives. Acknowledging that people think in different ways, stories are collected, composed and identified according to ways of knowing described by Tyson Young Porter as minds that work together to give a holistic view. Kinship mind, story mind, dreaming mind, ancestor mind and pattern mind. And to enable active ways to engage with the stories online, creature avatars are being created for people to play with and imagine themselves 
being part of the stories told. Between Us we wrote and prepared material to see the evolving online Meso Living Data Map and this link was embedded in the paper. Animations were made that trace scientific data and drawings and gestures that people make as they tell their stories. Music and poetry were made in response and fed back into the project. One such story is told by Ellery's Drawings in Sand. Drawings in Sand bring to life his knowledge from scientific data of disruptions to natural flows in an estuarine environment where a river meets the sea. My name is Ellery Johnson. I am an aquatic ecologist at UTS. I first met Lisa at the 2017 AFSS Cultural Water Symposium and have worked with her on several projects since, including the paper she is outlining today. During that time, I have begun to incorporate some principles of Indigenous knowledge sharing into my work. While not an artist, I have found that engaging with art as a communicative tool has helped me to understand my science better and communicate it more strongly. This is a short communication I have made about the findings of some research undertaken during my thesis. Estuaries depend on freshwater inflows to regulate them ecologically. Their health is not just dictated by their internal water quality, but also their connections to the surrounding catchment. As freshwater inflows transport resources to estuaries, preventing them may have ecological consequences. With the transport of organic matter and nutrients downstream to estuaries by inflows, algal and microbial growth is stimulated. A key organism in transporting these food web resources through the food web are these zooplankton, called copepods. I have found that in an unregulated estuary with natural flows, seasonal temperature, algal growth and adult copepod populations are all correlated. However, in a disrupted system with reduced flow, I found that seasonal temperature, algal growth and adult copepod populations did not correlate. While the mechanisms driving these differences are not fully known, freshwater inflows seem to be a key to the ecological health of estuaries. IT engineer Kat Kutai has begun to develop the map and online portals for collecting and displaying stories and enabling people to feed back into the project to share and grow knowledge. I have begun to develop the Living Data Library as a repository for feeding into the map and for presenting as a touchscreen interactive installation and online. Animations are co-created and geolocated to enable people to physically and viscerally connect with regions other than those they inhabit and increase awareness of global values and issues from different sources of knowledge. Stories continue to be collected along the path of the ocean currents from Antarctica to all other areas to express the significance of the linkages around the world of the effect of climate change. Traditional and contemporary cultural arts can show connectivity in nature in ways that bring to life data from the scientific method and show the difference between historical, natural, environmental phenomena and current changes and disruptions to existing ecosystems.